complex numbers. And uh, the reason that we need to understand the complex numbers is that we can construct a certain equivalence or a certain relationship between these numbers and the, uh, and the matrices. Because the complex numbers, in essence, uh, they have an, a representation. When we work with them, they, have the, they can represent rotations. And we know for sure that the matrix, that is exactly what it can also do, which is the rotation of a certain uh, vector. Now, regarding the complex numbers, we can give an example. We know for sure that for any polynomial of the order n in X, uh, we should have n solutions. And these we can define as uh, a n x to the power n plus a n minus 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus a 1 x to the power 1 plus a 0 x to the power 0. This is equal to 0. So here we have a polynomial of the order n and we should be looking for n solutions. Okay. N uh, solutions. So this is what we should, uh, what we should find. And uh, let's, give, let's give an example. Let's assume for, uh, let's say that we have the following, following equation. x squared plus 4x plus 4. This is equal to 0. And uh, we want to find the roots of this polynomial. Now, we look at this, at, uh, at this system, and we can write this one as x plus 2, all squared, this is equal to 0. Now, this shows that we have a single root which is located at x equal to minus 2. Okay? At least we have one because this graph, this, is, uh, this provides a parabola which is going to look like this. Okay? So the graph of this one, it's uh, right here. Now, let's assume another polynomial which is of the form x squared minus 4x plus 5, this is equal to 0. So again, we try to identify two roots for this, uh, for this system, for this polynomial, and uh, in order to find, actually, if we try to draw this one, uh, if we try to draw this graph, if this graph, wherever it intersects with the x-axis, that determines the, the roots. So we can write this one as x minus 2, all square plus 1. This is equal to 0. This means that at this was minus 2. Here we have 2. And the graph of x minus 2 all square is this one. So this is x minus 2 all square, which is also equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, if we have plus 1, we lift this whole uh, parabola like this. So then this equation, let me do, do this one, a double line. This is this function, and it looks like this one has no root in the real number space. Okay? So we can say that this has no solution, no solution on real number space. Okay? This is for sure, we have nothing to do about it, but we still uh, are looking for the, the, for two roots, because it's, it is of the second order. So we can denote this one as P2 in X, polynomial in second order in X. Now to find X1 and X2, we can use a general formula, which is minus B plus minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC, this divided by 2A, okay? And then if we try to, if we substitute the respective values, we get minus b, this is equal to 4, uh, plus minus, plus minus the square root of b squared, this is 16, minus 4ac, minus uh, 20, divided by 2a, divided by 2. So that's what we obtain, and then we move ahead, we write the following. 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2, plus minus uh, the square root of minus 4, divided by 2 again. Now, the square root of minus 4, this one, we don't, uh, for a long time, 
we had no way to find a solution for such a system because the square root of negative numbers, it was not defined. Now here we have 2 plus minus, minus 4, we can write this one as square root of 4 times square root of minus 1, divided by 2. Again, so then we can divide, square root of 4 is 2, 2 divided by 2, they cancel each other, and then we get that this is 2 plus minus the square root of minus 1. Now, uh, the first time when the, the complex numbers are defined, what we define for all the cases is that we write that the square root of minus 1, it is equal to i. In some textbooks of engineering, you might find this one also in J. So if you see it, it uh, you know that it could be either i or j. It represents the notation or of, a, of a complex number. Now, this complex number, it is a set of numbers which includes the real space in it. Okay? So we have no solution on R, but it looks like we have solution on the complex number space. So complex numbers, we denote them like this. Okay? They are a complex number. Uh, we first take this one as a definition, and then we can also uh, consider that i squared is equal to minus 1. So i is an imaginary number, that one, uh, multiple square is minus 1. So this way, we can easily define the, the complex numbers. So then, let's come here, and this would be equal to 2 plus minus i. So it looks like one root, so we can say that x1, this is equal to 2 plus i, and the x2 is equal to 2 minus i. So we needed, we had a polynomial of second order in x, and we found the two roots, we are happy about it. So it looks like the polynomials, they have uh, the exact number of roots of whatever the order is, only in the complex number space. And uh, one thing is, is uh, for sure, is that the real number space, it is a subset, so this is a subset, of the complex numbers. Okay, so complex number space, it is an extension of the real numbers. And then, uh, so these are the, the, the complex numbers, and then let's provide a couple of uh, different examples. So, and complex numbers, they are defined like this. We can denote those, let me use this part of the board, any complex number, we often denote them as z, these are equal to x plus i, y, okay? So this is the real part, and this is the complex part. Uh, this uh, also, we can define a complex conjugate, so which is equal to x minus i, y. So if we change the, the sign of the complex uh, of the complex part, this is called the complex conjugate. So this is complex uh, conjugate. Okay, and then now other than this, we can also say that uh, the when we talk about the real numbers, we know that uh, we always try to identify or try to find where a certain number is in the numbers, uh, the real number space. For example, here, we denote 2 is right here, 1, it's here, 0, this is, we find it easily, this is the 2, and, uh, and, and so on, okay? So now, we also need a notation for the complex number, or we need to, we need to describe the complex numbers the same way like we do with the real numbers. For this, we, we can define, as, uh, I think you can see this part, but I, I want to put the, the graphs in the center of the board. So here we have a, a plane where we try to draw the, the uh, we try to plot the complex numbers. Now the horizontal plane, we consider this one the real part of the complex numbers. On the y-axis, we put the imaginary part of the complex numbers. So if we are to write uh, the numbers over there, so let's assume for a moment 
that we have a number z1 which is equal to 2 plus i. Okay, this is a complex number. Where is it on the on that plane? The real part of 2 plus i, so let's do it like this. The real part of 2 plus i is equal to 2, okay? Because we can also give the formal definition here, actually. Probably here it's better. So the real part is x and the complex part is y, okay? Again, the real part of 2 plus i is 2 and the, uh, okay, and the imaginary part of 2 minus 2 plus i, this is 1, okay? Or imaginary part of 3 minus 6i is equal to what? This is equal to minus 6. Okay, so we are trying to determine all the relevant uh, So I need this part here. So let's start here, z1, let z1 be a complex number, which is equal to 2 plus i. And let's come up with another complex number, which is z2, which is equal to 3 minus 2i. And uh, we can also write down here, z1 complex conjugate, this is equal to 2 minus i. Now that we have the complex numbers, we can, uh, so these are three of these, we can define, uh, let's try to plot this initially here. Uh, let's do this first. So the real part of 2 plus i, it is, we have two units here and one unit here. So this is the 2, this is the 1, and uh, this complex number, this is that 1. Okay, so this is z1, z2, it is 3 minus 2i, so here we have the 3, and we have minus 1, minus 2, we have 3 minus 2i, we find this complex number right at this point, and this is our z2. Now, regarding the, the z1 complex conjugate, Z1 complex conjugate is going to be 2 minus i. So we get a point somewhere here. So this number, this is uh, Z1 complex conjugate, which is the reflection of Z1 with respect to the x-axis. Then immediately we start defining the operations with these numbers. So whenever we add two complex numbers, we add the real parts and the imaginary part separately. So here we have 2 plus i plus 3 minus 2i. This would be equal to 5 uh, minus i. Okay? So, uh, and at the same time, we can say that z1 minus z2, this would be 2 plus i minus 3 minus 2i. This is equal to minus 1, the real part, and the complex part is plus 3i. So, these are the summation and the subtraction. Then, important parameters that we can immediately define for the complex numbers, they will be the modulus okay, and the argument. The modulus, this is equal to, or we denote this one as the modulus of z, which is equal to the square root of uh, so, assuming that a complex number is defined in, as in here, and the complex conjugate is defined as in here, so I want you to have a look at this uh, expression, then the modulus of z is equal to x squared plus y squared, okay? So this is the definition of the modulus. And then, so what this gives, this gives, if we see also from the graph here, it will be as if we are trying to find the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. So if we have a complex number here, z1, which is 2 and 1, the modulus of z would be 2 squared plus 1 squared. Now, a more general definition, you can also think about the problem like this. This is equal to z complex conjugate times z. 
Okay. Personally, I like this definition better because this reminds us uh, of how we used to find the magnitude of a vector. So for a moment, if we think about a vector which is 3 by 1, okay, let's assume a vector v which is equal to 1 minus 1, 2, this is vector v. And now the question is, what is the magnitude of vector v? We have provided in this class the formal definition that the magnitude of a vector v it is equal to v transpose times v times and the square root of these two. So v transpose would be equal to v transpose, so this is 3 by 1, okay? So v transpose is 1 by 3, which is 1, minus 1 and 2. And this is 1 by 3. Then we multiply it with the vector v itself which is 1 minus 1, 2, which is 3 by 1, and then we take the square root. So if we multiply this vector with this column, we get a number which is 1 by 1, so we get a scalar. And here we have 1 plus 1, it's 2 plus 4, 6. So the magnitude of V, this vector, this is equal to the square root of 6, okay? So I want you to think about the, the magnitude of a vector and the modulus of a complex number in, uh, in similar terms, okay? Because uh, if we see here, now this is the, the formal definition of complex numbers, the formal definition of the of the complex conjugates and uh, let's have a look at a couple of examples so z1 what is the, ma the modulus of z1 modulus of z1 it's equal we can simply say the following we can say that this is the square root of a square plus b square okay so we look we have two and one so we have two square plus one square and what we get here is the square root of 5. Okay? And then we can also include here what is the modulus of Z1 complex conjugate. And Z1 complex conjugate is 2 minus i. So here this would be equal to the square root of 2 squared plus minus 1 all squared. Okay? This is also square root of 5. So in this part, we can easily right here, the modulus, this is going to be equal to the square root of 5, here, this is also the square root of 5. Then, we can denote also the argument, and the argument, it is defined as, so we can say that argument of z, this is equal to the inverse tangent of y over x, okay? So this is the same way, so it's the same function. We can say arc tangent, arc tangent, y over x. So what this gives, this gives the angle which is formed between the, the vector representing the complex number with respect to the x-axis. So let's try to identify what is the argument of, the, of two, uh, 2 plus i. So let's see what we obtain. We have here the argument of 2 plus i. This is equal to the inverse tangent of 1 divided by 2. What is inverse tangent? Can you check this one using a, a calculator? Can you check this? 26.57. Okay, 26.57. So let's write it here. So this is 26. You know, uh, 26.6. Let's write it like this. And then uh, let's see what is the argument of a number 3 minus 2i. What is this? This would be tangent inverse of 
minus 2 divided by 3. So what angle do we find in this case? Minus 33 over 0.6. Minus 33.6. So let's write this here. This is minus 33.6. Now, we need to know also what is the, the modulus of Z2. How can we find the modulus of Z2? Uh, it should be easy because it should be 3 squared plus 2 squared, all square root. Right? So this is what we should uh, obtain. But at the same time, we, should, we can also have a look at the, at the second uh, definition. So let's say the modulus of Z2 this is equal to the square root of 3 squared plus minus 2 all squared. Okay? So this is simply 3 squared plus 2 squared. So we get 9 plus 4, we get square root of 13. So here we get square root of 13. Then we can also have a look at this. Z2 modulus, this can be equal to Z2 complex conjugate times Z2. So I want to write this one uh, to have uh, a somewhat equivalence with the vectors where we took the V transpose times V. What is Z2 complex conjugate? Can you find this? It's 3 plus 2i. That's true. So we just change the sign of the, of the complex number and we get here 3 plus 2i times 3 minus 2i and let's see what we get. So we get we have two terms multiplied by another two terms, so we should get a total of four. So we have three times three, this is nine. Three times minus two i, we get minus six i. Two i times three, we get plus six i. And then we get uh, two i times two i is four i squared minus minus four i squared. Okay, now these two terms, they cancel out. Minus 4i squared, this would be equal to the square root of 9 minus 4. i squared is minus 1, right? So this is like this, because i squared is minus 1. Then this would be equal again, square root of 13. Okay, and then, uh, so since we are dealing with the multiplication of, of numbers, let's uh, try to see what is the multiplication between Z1 and, uh, and Z2? So here we have Z1 times Z2. This would be equal to 2 plus i times Z2, which is 3 minus 2i. And this would be equal to 3 times 2. We get 6 minus 4i minus 4i plus 3i. And we get minus 2i squared, minus 2i squared. And this is equal to, uh, we get 6 minus i minus 2 times minus 1, because i squared is minus 1. So we get then, this is plus 2, so this will be equal to 8 minus i. So we have here 8 uh, minus i. Now, it looks like the and by the way, we have to look back here. So what is going to be the argument of the Z, Z1 complex conjugate? Any idea what that would be? So this is 26.6, uh, OK? And this angle here, what is this angle? Minus 33.6. Now, since Z1 complex conjugate is uh, the reflection with respect to the x axis, then this, uh, the argument here is going to be minus 26.6. So that is uh, for, for sure. Okay, and then uh, let's see what we obtained here. We found out that Z1 times Z2 is 8 minus i. And this means that we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, minus i, we're going to get 
a vector, so this is 8, minus i, this is minus 1, so it's going to be a vector that extends down here, okay, from the origin up to this point. So this is z1 times, uh, times z2. Now, we did, so this is what the multiplication, how the multiplications are related, and then we can also uh, provide an important property of the modulus and the, of the argument. So if we multiply any two numbers, z1 times z2, the modulus will be equal to the modulus of z1 times the modulus of z2, okay? And also, the argument of z1 times z2, this would be equal to the argument of z1 uh, plus argument of z2, okay? So these are a couple of properties whenever we multiply any two complex numbers. Now, uh, so we are multiplying these, and uh, actually these arguments, I think it is clear that this is the angle that the z1 creates with the x-axis, this is the angle that z2 creates with the y-axis, and for a moment, let's look at, at uh, another value here. So this was just addition of complex numbers, let's take this away for a moment, and let's write here what is uh, z1 and z2. If we multiply z1 and z2, we got the answer, it's 8 minus i, so this is equal to 8 minus i, and uh, we want, so we got another, another complex number. So what is the modulus of 8 minus i? The modulus of 8 minus i, it should be equal, this is 8 minus i, this is equal to the square root of 8 squared, plus minus 1 all squared. So 8 times 8, 64 plus 1, square root of 65. Okay? So we get here the square root of 65. And actually, we can confirm also that when we multiply z1 and z2, the modulus is equal to the modulus of z1, which is square root of 5, times the modulus of z2, which is square root of 13. So if we multiply those two, this is what uh, we get, okay? Now, regarding the argument of Z1 and Z2, that means that what will be the angle which is created by this number with the x-axis? In this case, what do you think we are going to get? So, we just need to add these two numbers, right? Because we said here that whenever we multiply two complex numbers, we just uh, we will add the uh, the two angles, or we can check it here. We can say the argument of eight minus i. This is equal to the tangent inverse of minus one divided by eight. Can someone calculate this? What is the inverse tangent of minus 1 divided by 8? Minus 7, approximately. Minus 7, okay. So this is equal to minus 7. Okay, we just write here minus 7. And we can easily notice that this minus 7, it's equal to this plus this. Okay, so we just add these two uh, numbers. So it looks like these, uh, the complex numbers, they do provide us some... Uh, E easiness, some easy way to figure out where where the, uh, the result is going to be. Now, as we said before, what is essential for us is try to determine where in this plane the complex numbers uh, will be. And now, let's have a look by at, uh, at uh, multiplying a complex number by i, z. So, uh, let's erase this one again. This was the modulus and the definition of modulus. I think we, we did this. And let's have a look of uh, what is i z1. What is i z1? So this.
So here we have i times z1. Z1 is 2 plus i, right? So can somebody answer here? Who can raise the hand? Someone can. Let me see. I'm going to pick up someone. Uh, Anissa, yes. Yes. So what is i times uh, z1? 2i plus i square. Yes. i square is equal to minus 1. So we have 2i minus 1. That's true. Minus 1 plus 2i. Okay. And now, what is the modulus of i times z1? What is the so modulus of minus one is minus one square yes. plus two square. Yes. And we have a root of five. So this is root of five. That is correct. What is the argument then? Argument of minus one plus two i. This would be the tangent inverse, right? Of uh, two divided by minus one, so two. So can someone find what is the tangent of uh, inverse tangent of two minus two? Minus sixty-three point four. Minus sixty-three point four. Okay. So we are here minus sixty-three point four. That's good. And then let's check the following. What is i squared times z1? Uh, Anissa, you can answer this one again. So Yes, so we have i squared times 2 plus i. Or we can do it like this. i squared times z1, it's i times this number, right? Yes. This is minus 1 plus 2i, and this is equal to? Minus i. Yes. Plus 2i squared. Plus 2i squared, which is then equal to? Minus 2. Minus, minus i. So this is minus 2 minus i. Okay. What is the modulus of this number? It's again uh, root of 5. Most probably. We can easily write this one square root of 5 because it's going to be 2 squared plus 1 squared. That's good. Now we need to find the argument again. So we have to find this would be equal to the tangent inverse of uh, what will be the ratio. Minus 1 divided by, by minus 2, right? What? Minus 1 divided by minus 2, which is somewhat the tangent inverse of 1 over 2. So it looks like here we have a positive slope. What is a positive slope? A positive slope is anything which extends from quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. Okay? Negative slope could be any slope which extends between quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So quadrant 1, we consider this. Quadrant 2 is this. Quadrant 3 is here. And the quadrant 4 is uh, here. And we also know that in quadrant 1, x and y are larger than 0. Here, x and y are smaller than 0. Here, x is negative, y is positive. Here, x is positive, y is negative. So we can see this. And we know that any slope which extends from quadrant 3 to 1, the slope will be positive. We know this much. But now, who can find what is the tangent inverse of 1 over 2? Can somebody calculate this? 26.6. 26.6. But this is also equivalent to 26.6 minus 180 degrees. Would you agree with this? Because both these angles, they are the same slope. Okay. Uh, okay then. So this is uh, uh, 26.6 minus 180. So what is this number? Minus 180, we just have here minus 153.4. Minus 153.4. That's good. We can continue again. We can find i cube z1. What is i cube z1? We multiply by i here, and we get 1. You can correct if I'm wrong. This is uh, 1 minus 2i. Is this correct? 
I think that is true. So what? Uh, yes. Yes, but I don't. I don't like this answer actually. Is it true? Minus one. Okay. Yes, this is correct. Also, because if we see here, uh, from i z one and i cube z one, we have multiplied here. I don't know if you can see. So from here to here, we have multiplied with i squared. What is y squared? It's minus one, right? So we have multiplied by minus one. That's good. We get one minus two i. But at the same time, this one, it's a uh, wait a second. This is 1 minus 2i, yeah, that's correct. Now, let's try to find what is i to the power 4 times z1. This would be equal to 2 plus i. Okay, multiplied by minus 1. And most probably, you can confirm that these uh, modulus they will all be square root of 5. And we know also that i to the power 4 times z1 is equal to z1, right? Because we see that this z1 here is the same as this one in here. So then this angle is going to be also 26.6. So what did we observe here? It looks like each time, so what was, uh, so z1, z1 it was here, that's good. What is i times z1? i times z1 is minus 1 uh, plus 2i. So minus 1 plus 2i is minus 1 here, and 2i is here. So then we get this one. So this is i z1. Okay? And then we have i squared z1. It's minus 2 minus i, which is minus 2 here, and minus i along the negative x. So we get this. So this is i squared z1. But then we, have, we look at i cubed z1, it's 1 minus 2i, 1 minus 2i. So this is not the best drawing, it's not to scale, unfortunately, but we get this. This is i cubed z1. And finally, we get i to the power z1, this would be equal to, so this z1 would be equal to i to the power 4 uh, z1. So if we look at these, at these corners, it looks like we have only a rotation each time, a rotation by what? What is this angle here? So we get angles of 90 degrees. Okay. So it looks like each time we rotate a complex number by i, what we are really doing, we are multiplying by an operator, or we are rotating it by 90 degrees. Why is this? Because it is easily seen here that the argument of uh, i times any number z, this is equal to the argument of z plus what? Plus 90 degree. Okay? Because the argument of i, it is 90. Because if we have a, if we have a look here, I might erase this one very soon. So let's have a look at this graph here. What is i? i is this graph right here. Okay. So what is the angle? It is pi over 2. What is minus 1? Minus 1 is right here. And uh, the angle it is 180 with respect to the positive x-axis. So this is i, and this corresponds to rotation of 90 degree. This is minus 1, corresponds with rotation by 180 degree. And here we get minus i, which corresponds with rotation of minus uh, 90 degree. So this is something that uh, we can, it looks like, by doing this uh, example, we just uh, learned that multiplying by i means simply uh, a, a simple rotation. Now here, we can give some more properties regarding the, the modulus. So here we have that the complex conjugate of the complex conjugate is equal to the number itself. And this is easy to think about because we know that once you take the complex conjugate of a complex number, we change the, 
imaginary part, we change the sign. If we change the sign of the imaginary part again, we get the same number, which means the following. The complex conjugate, or let's give 2 minus 3i, the complex conjugate of this is equal to 2 plus 3i. But the complex conjugate of 2 plus 3i is equal to the initial number, 3 minus. So this means that this is equal to the complex conjugate, complex conjugate. So this property, we might uh, ex accept this one uh, as it is. And then we have the, any complex number plus a complex conjugate, this would be equal to 2 times the real part of a number, of a complex number. And then the z minus z complex conjugate, this would be equal to 2 times i times imaginary pi of z. So let's try to confirm this, uh, this relationship in here. So let's see what we get. Uh, z1 plus z1 complex conjugate. z1 and z1 complex conjugate is here. So we get 2 plus i plus 2 minus i. So we can see that the i's, the complex part, they cancel out each other. So we get just 2 times 2. So this is 4. So we confirm uh, this uh, statement. Then we can have also z1 minus z1 complex conjugate. This will be 2 plus i minus 2 minus i, and this would be equal to uh, 2i. So we just find 2 times the imaginary part. Now here we have another important uh, statement, which is the following. Z divided by Z complex conjugate, what this is, is the following. We get here x squared minus <coughs> minus the y squared divided by x squared plus y squared plus i times 2xy divided by x squared plus y squared x squared plus uh, y squared okay so this one the first three statements here they are almost uh, intuitive but the, the last one, it is not very intuitive because we have not talked yet about the division by a complex number. Now, regarding this, uh, the division by a complex number, it is not, uh, it is not defined because, let's think for a moment, we are in linear algebra. Can we do a division like this? So we can have a matrix A divided by matrix B. Can we do this? So this division, this is simply uh, not defined. Similarly, the division by a complex number, it is also not defined. So here we see another equivalence between the matrices and the complex numbers. So let's try to see what we obtain if we try to divide Z1 divided by Z2. Z1 divided by Z2 is 2 plus i divided by 3 minus 2i. And this would be equal to, so or what we can do is we can multiply this expression by 1. Okay? There is no problem if we multiply this expression by 1. And uh, we write this again, 2 plus i divided by 3 minus 2i times 3 plus 2i. Russian Zerner complex conjugate, the Russian Zerner complex conjugate, the 3 plus 2i times 3 plus 2i. So this is one, we right? don't change much. That in this case, we obtain that 3 minus 2i multiplied by 3 plus 2i, we get 3 squared plus 2 squared. 3 squared plus 2 squared. And then in the numerator, 
we see that we should get four terms because we are multiplying two terms by another two. So we are going to get four. Two times three is six. Two times two i plus four i. Three i plus three i. And we get plus two i squared. Plus two i squared is simply minus two. Okay. So then we get here six uh, minus two. This is equal to four. 4i plus 3i is plus 7i plus 7i divided by, what is this, 9, 13, okay? So it looks like z1 over z2 is going to be equal to, in fact, it's good if we write this answer here, uh, z1 divided, okay, so we have here z1 divided z2, this is equal to 4 over 13, 4 over 13 plus i times 7 over 13, okay? So we have uh, this number here, and uh, allow me to take this out for a moment, so let's write it here, z1 divided by z2 is equal to 4 over 13, plus i, 7 over 13. So, let's try to find what is, what is the modulus of z1 divided by z2. So, what is the modulus of, of this number? Uh, this is going to be 4 over 13, all square, plus 7 over 13, all square, square root. Okay, this would be the modulus of, of, of this complex number. And this would be 4 over 13, it is 16 plus 49 divided by 169. 169. And then this would be equal 14 plus 49, 16 plus 49, we get 65 divided by 169 square root, so this is going to be equal to uh, the square, what is this, square root of 65, so 65, it is 13 plus times 5, 169, it's 13 times 13, okay, and we can cancel out a couple of 13s, we get 5 over 13 square root. This is 5. So this is the modulus of this number. Then the other question is, what is the argument of this complex number? The argument of this complex number is going to be equal to the tangent inverse. So we have to consider so we're looking for this number. That number over there is going to be the tangent inverse of what? The y over x. What is y? It is 7 over 13 over 5. So this is going to be 7 over 4. So what is this uh, angle? Can you calculate this? 60.2. 60.2, OK. So we get here 60.2. Now, these informations, they are uh, simply additions and subtractions of the complex conjugates uh, with themselves. So we said here 60.2. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. And now, regarding the, the properties that, uh, of the complex numbers, so here at the bottom, we have quite a few relationships. So when we multiply two complex numbers, the modulus, they, uh, they are multiplied also, and the angles, they are uh, added, okay? So now, in a similar move, we can also say the following. When we divide two complex numbers, z1 over z2, the modulus of the ratio will be equal to the ratio of the modulus of z1 divided by 
the modulus of Z2. And uh, we can also notice that this is what we obtained, okay? But the modulus of the modulus of Z1 over Z2, it should be equal to the modulus of Z1 divided by the modulus of Z2. So this is somehow uh, confirmed, right? So we divide them, we divide the modulus, we multiply them, we multiply the modulus. Now the argument, and the, we can say of uh, Z1 divided by Z2, this is equal to the argument of Z1 minus the argument of Z2. So here we have another important relationship. And then we can check if this is true, because we have argument of Z1 is 26.6, 26.6 minus the argument of Z2. Z2 is 33 minus 33.6, okay? And uh, if we do this calculation, all we get, it is 2, 4, so we get like, is it 60? Yes, yeah, 60.2. So we confirm that this, this rule is also uh, true, okay? So in this table that we see these calculations, then uh, we might, so these results here, all these results that we have so far, they will become much more intuitive or much more easier to perceive if we have, if we use the polar representation. The polar representation, it is one way to denote, so assume that we have Z, which is equal to X plus I, Y, okay? So this means that the complex number, we can denote it using X and Y. But at the same time, we can write, instead of X and Y, we can use only R and theta, okay? So this would be the polar representation. How can we do this? We can do this one. So this is X and Y. We want to go to these coordinates, and this can be written as R e to the power I theta, okay? So this is... Uh, uh, the the way that we should we can we are able wait a second hmm. okay in fact sorry I might need this space I apologize so let me take this because okay so the polar representation we want to represent x and y into a new domain which includes r and angle theta, okay? And uh, what this means, this means that in all of this uh, sketch here, we will be able to determine any point on the complex number plane by determining a, a, a distance from the origin, so this is r, and an angle theta. So let's have a look here. How can we determine z1, i z1, i squared z1, i cubed z1? Let's have a look at these numbers. All of these numbers, like z1, i z1, i squared, they all have a modulus of 5. That means that uh, they are, uh, we can draw a circle with a distance of square root of 5, which is, is going to pass something like this. Okay? I tried to do a good circle. So then, if we are given these, any one of these numbers, first of all, we draw a circle with, uh, with a certain uh, uh, radius, and then we have to look where a specific number is. This is 26.6. So with respect to the x-axis, we draw an angle 26.6, which is this number, and we find this intersection, we say, we found Z1, okay? Let's check for I, uh, I cube Z1. I cube Z1, it is the same modulus, it is square root of five, so it should be on the circle. But at which angle? I cubed Z1, uh, we get an angle, actually we did not write the value over there, but we get this angle here, so if we look at the intersection, we find it uh, precisely. Similarly, if you're looking for Z2, how can you find Z2 using the polar representation? We look at the modulus, it's square root of 13. So if we draw a circle with the square root of 13 radius, and then we look at the angle, it's minus 33.6. So this would be square root of 13. 
Okay, but then we have minus 33, which is this angle, so we find this point Z2. So it, this is how we can uh, uh, determine the same complex numbers, but a different representation. Now, in order to do this representation, we have a very fundamental rule for identity. And this fundamental identity, this deserves a more central place on the board. This uh, fundamental identity, this is the following, e to the power i theta, this is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, so this is called the Euler identity. Euler, he was a great, uh, I think he was a British mathematician, and he came up with this, uh, well, at least, I don't know if he came up with this, but out of respect, somebody named it after him. Okay. Uh, okay, so then, so if this is the Euler identity, we can then re multiply by r everywhere. Okay, so we can write this one, r e to the power i theta, this would be equal to r cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, and then what is uh, interesting here is then the following, if we have, so, when we multiply the, the complex numbers, we substitute the numbers, we try to identify correctly where they are on the, on the graph or on the two-dimensional representation of the complex numbers uh, plane. But now, if we use a polar representation, things can become a little, uh, a little easier because of the following. Let's think for a moment, uh, we can use the same graph, but let me, I don't know. Uh, let's give let's give an example here. Let's assume that we have uh, a complex number z1, which is equal to two times e to the power i uh, fifteen. Okay, so then we have to find where this is. This is one two. So this means that if we draw a path with a radius of two. But the angle is 15. The angle is 15, so we draw this angle. So it looks like this number Z1 is right here. So this angle, it is 15. This is 1, this is 2. That's good. So then we, so we found this number. Then we can have another complex number, which is Z2. This is equal to 3 times e to the power i 30. Okay? Then where is this number? We try to find this is 1, 2, we draw a circle with a radius 3. Okay, so this complex number should be anywhere on this, on this circle. But at what angle? The angle is 30. So then we draw this angle 30, here we found it. This is Z2. So Z1 is here, Z2 is here. So what is the product between these two numbers? The product this would be z1 times z2. This would be equal to 2 times e to the power i times 15 multiplied by 3 e to the power i times 30. So this would be equal to 2 times 3. This is 6 e to the power i times 45. So the angles add up together. So then the multiplication here should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's going to be a circle somewhere here. And the angle is going to be 45. Okay? So if we use the polar representation, things can become a little uh, more clear. So let's see what is Z2 divided by Z1. Z2 divided by Z1 would be equal to 3 times e to the power i 30 divided by 2, e to the power i times 15. 3 divided by 2, we get 1.5, so this is the amplitude, it looks like 1.5 is going to be somewhere, a circle, which is going to be somewhere in here. Okay, anywhere over there. This is 1.5 times p, sorry, 1.5 times e to the power i, 30 minus 15. So we subtract these, the exponential. 
So the angle is 15. So then this is going to be some point in, uh, in here. Okay, because this number, we assume that the angle is 15. So this is what we obtain. So I have a as read the hand. Any problem here? Okay. Ray, uh, we will Ray, okay? We will. I thank you for just give me one more uh, one more minute. So it looks like this is gonna be 1.5, so this was one. So let's be known also. So this was the this number is a product of of these two. So let me draw the original numbers, Z1 and Z2 over here. This is the product, okay? And uh, this is the, the division, the ratio. So we can have a look here. Now, any question for so far? Uh, we can pick up the questions, uh, or we can continue with the questions in the next session. But for now, we can give a short break.